Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Hey. And welcome Congratulations. once again. Good morning, good morning, boy. Good morning to you, Homer. How are you doing this morning? I'm this doing morning. very well this morning. You? <laughs> I was doing well before someone started mocking me. Well, shouldn't have decided to film today. All right, so we're going to smoke uh, the last of the four flavors of the five many faces of 1Q. So this one is only 1Q then, right? One of them was 1Q. No, I already smoked it. That one's gone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this is the fourth one that you get to try. And this is Sutliff. I guess it's LM Vanilla. Again, unfortunately, they've handwritten on this label. It's got printed on there many faces of 1Q in print. And it also uh, has uh, the fact it's two ounces, but it's handwritten. And from hey, these, I, you know why they do that, right? I can't make them out. You know why they, why they do that? No, why they do that? Because they're actually about 30 different tobaccos. And they don't they want just, you to know. Yeah. So yeah. They, they, give you, they give you just four. All right, so I'm going to be smoking this in a, another nose warmer. Last week I was smoking in a polished nose warmer. This week I'm going to smoke this in a naked nose warmer. So, I have another Yabo. Hopefully this one isn't going to cut me. Not a knife. But it's something I've been anxious, anxiously awaiting. Um, talk briefly about um, Kickstarter. Um, Boy and I have talked about Kickstarter before, so we won't go into great detail on it, but we well, What is Kickstarter? It, it is... No, 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 it's no, no, no. it's no. a way for people to support things, um, technology, um, uh, craftspeople, it's crowdfunding. I, ideas, it's where, crowdfunding. where it's crowdfunding. All right. And there's a gentleman whose music I've been listening to for 30 plus years, and he has done a couple Kickstarter campaigns. The first one was for a movie. Greatly successful um, Kickstarter, like jazz. Kickstarter campaign. His second, Stop touching me with your knee. His second one was Thank for you. a new album. He is a musician. And that was, I, th I think in 36 hours, he hit his goal for his first album. And that was for, um, uh, uh, his name is Steve Taylor. The name of the band is Steve Taylor and the... Perfect. Oh, thank you. The Perfect Foil. And they announced in December that, uh, I believe it was December, that they're going to be doing a new album, which will be a one-time collaboration with a guy who is the lead singer and lyricist for a band called Daniel's Son. Not like uh, the Karate Kid, Daniel Son? Daniel Son. Um, and so that they changed the name for this album to Steve Taylor and the Danielson Foil. Kind of weird, big long name, but this is this is the reward that I get for sponsoring that recording at the level that I sponsored. So I'm excited about this, and uh, that's the weird thing about art uh, Kickstarters is that oftentimes you get something that is related to the final product, but not necessarily the final product, or oftentimes right. you get something in addition to the final product. Correct. Yes. So, like, um, a lot of the Kickstarters that I have funded are you're Kickstarting for the product at, at a certain level. So, um, well, okay, at the, at the basic level, um, you would basically get the download of the album. Okay, and uh, from there on up, they, they have the band, the members of the band are incredibly clever. The name of the album is Wow to the Deadness. Okay, That's so weird. it's... Steve Taylor in the Danielson foil, and the album is Wow to the Deadness. And what I got <laughs> at this level was I got a wooden casket. Oh my gosh. <laughs> which was hand painted by the members of the band. And then inside, first off, there's the inside of it. First off is a flash drive. And the flash drive here contains the album and a couple of videos and maybe even some more. I'll read the description here in a second. But the thing that's really kind of funny, and these guys are nuts, is in the casket 
are pictures of each of the band members that they have signed. <laughs> this is nuts. So let's get this out of here. Okay, so there's all five of the band members lying in repose. <laughs> and um, also a bunch of rubber bouncy balls. <laughs> Which is really what I was after. Yeah. Um, so here's here's the description of the uh, the reward that I got. Okay. You just have to find it. Took a couple screenshots since the um, cells uh, cell signal here is so awful. All right. So this is the Wow in a Box. Wow to the Deadness EP. It's the Deluxe Coffin Box Set. Um, a hand-painted decorative casket is custom, a, a custom flash drive with the complete EP, two music videos, and liner notes, autographed photo portraits of each band member lying in wide-eyed repose, and a multicolored surprise sure to make you exclaim, wow! You'll also get an exclusive digital download of the Wow to the Liveness live album, <laughs> that will be recorded on 213, so that has passed. Uh, it also includes a, a brief personalized recorded greeting from Steve Taylor, uh, digitally delivered on the night before Christmas. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, this was part of the, the December promotion. Oh, so did you get that already? Um, yes, I did. It was recorded fireside. It was really nice. Good. Um, here's the other thing about Steve Taylor and his Kickstarter campaigns. Most companies will have this funding thing where suddenly they get your money and then you don't hear anything. And you're wondering, is it coming? Steve has posted 21, I believe it's 21, um, follow-ups. And those are all at the Kickstarter um, website, but they've come as emails to me as well. Just talking about what's going on, the latest. It, where they it, are pictured, in the process. it pictured them with all the caskets and the guys painting them. And uh, awesome. Uh, brief, uh, blah, blah, blah. Wow to the Deadness EP, Advanced Digital Download, um, Wow to the Deadness Deluxe Coffin Set, and I already read those things. So, anyway, the uh, as far as the album is concerned, there's some very interesting quotes about it, but uh, what, I, what I'll tell you is the, the lyrics are kind of bizarre, as they typically are with Steve Taylor, and the guy from Danielson, who I want to say his name is Dan Smith, I think, Daniel Smith. Um, Steve Taylor said, so when it came time to collaborate, our only rule was if it sounds like something we've already done, throw it out. And we ended up with something that's not easily classifiable and hopefully doesn't sound disposable. This new album gives me instant joy and makes me want to dance in my car. Daniel wrote most of the lyrics and while I don't exactly know what they say, I know exactly what they mean. <laughs> No, and it's, Typical Steve Taylor. It would be hard, I would imagine, for a group like that to find things that they haven't done before because um, the band is made up of of <laughs> members of other bands that right. have been around for years and years and years. You know, between the, the four of them, there's probably a hundred years <laughs> yeah, of, easily. Of, of band experience. Um, their, their drummer is Peter Furler, for those of you who are fans of Newsboys. He was at one time the drummer and lead singer, and then became lead guitarist and lead singer. Um, not not unlike what happened uh, after Nirvana and uh, Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the the band members you, you could call it, I guess, in, to some degree, a super band. Yeah. Anyway, I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to hear it. Some of the some of the uh, music I've already heard as the digital download, and then some of them have already been uploaded onto uh, Spotify, on, on YouTube. I'm sure illegally, but YouTube has done it. You know how YouTube creates these profiles for people and just snags music off the the interwebs. Yeah, they're out there too. Anyway, so that's uh, that's my yabo out wow, to the deadness. Cool. I also have an ISIS. Well, yeah, this is, now, if that isn't silly, this is really silly. And I guess you could categorize this under how Amazon Prime is bad. Amazon Prime is good. 
<laughs> we like Amazon Prime. We, we buy quite a bit from Amazon Prime, and so it's good. You know what we should do sometime? Just as a, a random experiment. What? We should um, randomly go to our Amazon uh, purchase history mm -hmm. and just list the last thing that we bought. Oh, gosh. And talk about it. Yeah. Just randomly. I, I was thinking about that earlier, just... Just because I just bought some stuff on Amazon I bought a book, Prime. I bought a book today. Did you? Yeah. Um, I bought a six-deck card shuffler this week. That's right. I think my, my parents get their six-deck uh, card shufflers they, on Amazon. It is exactly like theirs, yes. Um, <laughs> mine, is for, uh, mine is for Munchkin, though. Different card game. So the other night, I'm sitting at a, uh, uh, an outdoor patio at a hotel with a couple of my bro workers and we were talking about selling and one of the challenges that salespeople have is especially when you're selling products that are very similar to what our competitors are selling and in some cases maybe the same product our competitor is selling uh, but the frustration where you go into these places and the customer is using a product that's so outdated it's either not correct for the demands of the market or perhaps it's very expensive because the product over time has been valued engineered it but still performs at the level that it mm -hmm. should and so briscoe my buddy briscoe says as as one of the guys was saying well you know it it uh i haven't had any problems with it it works just fine right well briscoe said you know i bet i could go home and dig in my closet and find my grandma's washboard and you know, it still works just fine. Yeah. She never had any problems with it, but we move beyond right. using washboards. So um, while sitting there at 11.30 on the patio, I jumped onto Amazon Prime to see what washboards cost, and I bought this washboard. It was made in Columbus. Actually, it's made in, not Columbus, in Logan, Logan. Ohio. We visited the factory, though it was a Sunday and they were closed. This is the Columbus Washboard Factory. Oh, we tried to stick a magna cob on the. Yes, uh, we did. Way, way high on yeah, the world's largest that. washboard. Um, and here it is, the uh, the color side, isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. it's made, the made right, made white wa washboard. And I figure that um, you know this isn't going to go to waste here because I can put some magna cobs on it. If only I could find a magna cob to put on. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah, so. Um, there's the downside of Amazon Prime. It's uh, that that one, one click ordering that they offer uh, makes it real easy to impulse shop. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you're going to wind up with a thirty dollar washboard. Thirty dollar washboard. <laughs> wow. I have wasted thirty dollars on worse stuff. Yeah, but only a few times. <laughs> Wow. I'm I'm proud to own one made in Ohio, just as we were. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it's historic. I mean, this thing's got a patent on it from 1907. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that was the last time somebody thought, huh, <laughs> I, should, I should make a better washboard. No, actually, no, they, they made a better washboard. And, and, and as sick as it sounds, since I bought that, I've been watching them on eBay. In, uh, in More the, things for you to buy and never use. In the 1940s, uh, when steel became, um, I guess, rationed, when they were collecting yeah, steel to use for the, the war effort, it left the companies that made washboards in a lurch, and what they came up with as a replacement is glass. And they still, to this day, the Columbus Washboard Factory still makes a glass panel that's rippled like that. Hmm. Washboard. But as I'm looking at some of the antiques, there was one called the Soap Saver. Now, if you're not familiar with how these things work, you put this down into your wash bas basin, which is just a tub of water, and you put a bar of soap, you rest it right here on this surface, and then you occasionally kind of charge this surface with soap, and then you can scrub against this. And there are people today, the Amish of course, but some military people that use smaller versions of these in the field, and um, if you've got ring around the collar or a stain that you can't get out uh, through the washing machine, this will cut right through it. So there are people who still swear by these. Anyway, this, this company uh, in, I want to say it was Chicago, made one that has cobalt blue glass. 
it's beautiful and incredibly expensive. Go on, on eBay and check out, just search Soap Saver Washboard, mm. and then don't bid a bit against me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're beautiful. That'll be the last one I buy, I hope, but I want one really bad. What do you think no. of tobacco? It's okay. It's not okay. one Q? It's not one Q. No. All right, so I, I propose that we take the other thing that we're going to talk about and, and push that to next week. All right. Let's say you. All right, but only if I can remember to put these clothes on. All right, done. You wear the same shirt next week Deal. as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Deal. Well, we'll wrap this up. Guys, thanks for watching. Make it a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.